Hey everybody, uh, my name is Thomas Mock. I'm presenting a video today on Tidy Tuesday and what we did with some web scraping uh, to get the data for week two of Tidy Tuesday. So each week uh, we try and find a nice data set that we can do multiple things with. So not only can you tidy it in terms of rows and columns and making everything uh, work well within R and within the Tidyverse, but we also need to get that data. Um, so sometimes we can just download data directly from the internet. People have uploaded nice data sets. Uh, for week two of Tidy Tuesday, we were looking at running back versus other positional salaries. And the original article from 538 used data that we didn't have access to. So we actually had to go to another website and scrape it in uh, into Excel format and then into R. Uh, you can also scrape things directly into R and avoid having to save it as an intermediate. And that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. I'll be basing a lot of my video today on a nice blog post by Jay Kopp, who is a more experienced uh, mentor in the R for Data Science online learning community. Uh, he's also a nice member. He's been very helpful in terms of answering questions, both on Twitter and in the Slack channel, and he's been helpful towards me in my direct learning process. So I really wanted to share his technique. So you can see his stuff here at jcop.com, and he walks through his uh, building up of this web scraping function, and he ends up with this really nice heat map uh, and he uh, tells us about how the fullback gets no respect. Basically, fullback salary is not changing, along with long snapper and uh, running backs as well. They're not changing very much. So that's pretty interesting. But moving on into the actual article, this is the original article we based everything off of. So 538, running backs are finally getting paid what they're worth. And it's the catch-22 because you're like, oh, okay, well, they're getting paid what they're worth. Their pay is going down. So... Uh, the NFL is not valuing running back salaries as much, or running backs in particular, and we can see that reflected in uh, how much they're getting paid. While every other player in the league is seeing these increases in their salary, sometimes incredible amounts, running back salaries have plateaued and look like they're starting to decrease. So we wanted to look at this and build up this graph. It's a nice graph. It's, it's got faceting. It's got a couple different things going on. So there's a lot of stuff we can learn from using it. But the data that they used is from ESPN Stats and Information Group, and I didn't have access to that. So we went to this other website called SpotTrack.com, which has salaries for a bunch of different American uh, sports, NFL, NBA, MLB, and so on. And it has these nice tables uh, where you can see the team and the cap dollars that they're spending for this position. You can see we're looking at the 2011 quarterback in this example. And if we scroll down to the second table, we can see that we have the player name, their cap dollars, and then a rank. So this table right here is going to be really helpful because we can actually grab these NFL uh, quarterback salaries at each year um, or in, for all the other positions and scrape those. And so we can download them directly into R and then make our analysis and save the data frame in that way. So let's go into R. So I made this in an R Markdown document. If you're not familiar with that, I'll have some links at the end um, in terms of how to form this and what's actually going on. But the gist of it is, is it allows you to write uh, kind of what you're thinking and what you're doing with your code. Um, it's pretty super similar to a Jupyter notebook in terms of you write code, you write some analysis, and you can actually see your plots and your outputs directly in line with what you're writing. So first thing we're going to do is load our libraries that we need. So we need the tidyverse, which has all of our uh, tidy functions. So ggplot, plier, tidyr, readr, per, tibble, stringr, forecats, and then uh, rvest, which we'll use to interact with HTML web content. And this we'll be using to download our data. And then glue, which is used to combine strings in hopefully clever ways. Um, and we'll see what that means in a little bit. So we'll load our libraries. And we'll go into the data sourcing stuff. So, like I said, we wanted to source the NFL positional salaries to match that 538 article, um, but we don't have access to NFL salaries from ESPN, so we have to find it manually at SportTrack. So, this is the URL that I was just showing you um, in terms of the positional salaries for the 2011 quarterbacks. And what's helpful here is we can kind of see that they have a consistent uh, theme here. So. 2011, I bet if we change it to 2012, um, it'll take us to 2012 salaries. If we change quarterback to something else, it'll change to something else in terms of like a running back or wide receiver. So we'll take a look at that in a bit. But for now, we're just going to take this URL. 
and we're going to read uh, this URL and see what uh, see what it gives us. So this is one of the first functions from Arvest. So this gives us that it's an XML document, HTML class, no JavaScript, and a couple different things about it. Uh, it's not really that helpful. I'm not an HTML uh, CSS expert, so um, that's not very helpful to me. But we can see moving on here to the next part, we can look at HTML nodes. So we can aim it to read specific portions. And we're like, okay, well, we want a table, so let's try and see if we can find a table. So if we do this, we do in fact see that there are two tables within our uh, URL. So we have a data table teams and data table something. And it looks like it has center, small. Again, this is not that helpful right now, but let's look at this. Okay, HTML table. So we can find uh, the URL, aim it at tables, and then pipe this into reading those tables. So what happens when we do that? Okay, well, this is awesome. Okay, so we get an output. We have two listed data frames. Data frame one is that position or the, the team salaries. So we can see the Eagles, the Jets, the Giants, how much they're spending on their quarterback. And then we get the second table, which is the quarterback name, their cap dollars, percent of cap hit, their rank, and this player, which appears to be a logical NA. This is, if we go back, this is the picture. So we can see that these tables match up perfectly with the team based and the player based salaries. So that's really good that we're actually getting the data that we want to get. Okay, so we've built up this, um, but we want to save this. We don't want to just sit there and not be able to use it. We don't want to pipe everything into one, uh, I guess, one set of pipes. So let's find the specific table path, and we can take a better look at it, because this ended up giving us two tables, so the table for team and the table for position. So I already have it listed here, but if we go back to the web page, we can actually do something cool. So we want to find the path to just this particular table. So if we right click, I'll just right click in here, uh, there's this inspect option. So you can do control shift I or inspect. Because I clicked on this area, it's gonna show me roughly that area. So when we're inspecting the code, we can see that as we move through, it gives us the various portions of this table. So if we move all the way up to that table class, data table, table sorter, that's the second table it showed us. And it wasn't very helpful before, but now we know, okay, this is the second table. So we can actually copy from this the selector. So we'll copy the selector, go back into R, and I'm assuming it's going to be this, but we can check to make sure. So I'll just paste that in there. And it is, in fact, main division teams table nth child six. Interesting naming system. Um, but we'll see what this gives us. So again, we're reading the, the URL. We want the node aimed at this uh, specific table. So let's see what it gives us. Okay, so it's giving us back to uh, that particular table. So if we uncomment, we can read that table. And now we're getting a single data frame, a listed data frame, and it's just giving us the player positional salary. So this is perfect. This is what we want. We're getting to just the table of interest. So now that we've got our table of interest, let's save it. So now we're reading HTML from that URL, aiming the HTML table at the path, and saving to a data frame. So uh, from earlier, we know that that was the quarterback data from 2011. So we'll save this as quarterback 2011. Um, OK, so we have a nice data frame saved. We'll take a look at it. And we have a data frame uh, with five variables, ranked player uh, with the picture that's missing, and then player with the name. 2011 cap dollars and the percent of 2011 cap. But how many data frames are we going to end up with? If we do quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, running back, we're going to end up with 10 positions. And we're going to do it from 2011 to 2018. So that's eight uh, total years. That's going to be 80 data frames. I don't want to rewrite all this code 80 times. And as Hadley Wickham says, if you do something more than three times, write a function. So let's build up a web scraping function. So you can see here that we're going back to our original URL, so spottrack.com slash 2011 quarterback, and we know there's something we want to change. Particularly, we want to change the year and the position. So we can see the year and the position here. So we'll build this up as base URL. We have, you know, just 2011 quarterback. We'll remove that. So now we have just NFL positional, and we can put in the year, and we can put in the position that we want to do. 
So we're going to build up our function. So we'll save it as salary scrape. It's going to be a function with two inputs, year and position. We're going to build our URL with glue. So we're going to see our base URL here. And then we're adding in the year. We've got these brackets on either side. And then we're going to do a, a slash. And then we're going to do position, another set of brackets, and then and the end quote. So this is going to form, uh, based on our input of year and position, basically the same thing. Uh, a add in a number and add in the letters necessary to fill out the position. So this will be a working URL. Then we're going to do our normal process. So read the URL, aim the node at the table, uh, and then read the table. OK, so let's save this function. And it does pop up on our function area, salary scrape. And let's just send any check it. So we want to look at 2011 quarterback. Mark Sanchez should be the first. Hello, Mark Sanchez and your $17 million salary. He's not making that much anymore, but back in 2011, he was a hot commodity. We can also see what happens if we change the year. So 2012, we can see Peyton Manning now takes over, and we don't see him, the other guy, anywhere else. Um, and we can go all the way to 2017. Let's see what that does. Good old Elite Joe Flacco's up here with 24 million. So we can basically say it's working at multiple positions. Now let's, or multiple years. Now let's see if it works for positions. So let's try 2017 tackles. We see a few people here. Nate Solder, who's a left tackle, formerly for the Patriots, and Joe Staley. Lane Johnson, who I think is with the Chiefs. I'm not sure. Eric Fisher, I think, was the Chiefs. Um, but regardless, couple linemen that we know, so we know it's working for multiple positions. So sanity check complete. Now that's great, but we're really not saving that much time. We still have, I mean, we saved a lot of typing because we can just type this 80 times, which is just, you know, 2017, 2018, 2016, 2015, all the way back, all the positions. That's not saving us that much time, but it is saving a lot of typing. So what we want to do is build up uh, inputs as a scaffold. So basically, we know the years, 2011 to 2018. We know the positions of interest, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tackle, linebacker, et cetera. We're going to do 10 total positions. So we can save a uh, string as years, and we can save a, uh, a string as positions. So this will be quarterback, running back, all the way through, all the different positions. Some of these have dashes, and I found that out just by going to SportTrack and seeing how it interpreted wide receiver, tight end, and the different things. So I did this ahead of time. Now we're going to put those into a scaffold data frame. So we'll use the tipple function to build up the data frame. Year will be years, and position will be a list of positions. Now the reason why we're doing this is if you look at scaffold, it gives us our, uh, our years, and then we have a list of 10 uh, strings. So quarterback, running back, tackle, all those different things are built up inside this list. So rather than having to do repeats, we can actually use tidier unnest, which is going to fill in the rest of the data frame. So now we can see it went from 10 total rows to 80 rows. So we have all 10 positions at each of the years. You can see it goes all the way out to 2018. So we now have our scaffold. So now we can use this scaffold to do the typing for us in terms of what year we want and what position we want. So we'll test out the inputs. So for salary scrape, again, we're doing 2011 linebacker. So it's working for linebackers. That's great. But we want to use the scaffold. So like, again, this is wasting time because we already have all this built up. So we'll use the scaffold to build a data frame. So we're going to limit the scaffold to our first four rows because this will actually take quite a bit of time if we let it do the whole thing because that's 80 different calls it's going to make. So for the first four rows, we have 2011 and all the years. We're going to do the quarterback, running back, tackle, and the tight end. So I'm going to explain this in a little bit, but what we're doing is we're going to save this as, uh, we'll say, table data. Um, we're going to take the head of scaffold, um, just the first four rows. So again, it's a little bit faster. And we're actually going to create a new column in the scaffold called data. Um, and we're going to apply a map function and the salary scrape function within this. So let's unwrap that a little bit. So per map allows you to apply multiple functions. In this case, map two allows us to apply two inputs to our function salary scrape. These inputs are going to be year and position. 
from the scaffold data. So it's going to iterate across these rows. So it'll do 2011 quarterback, then 2011 running back, then 2011 tackle as the two inputs, and so on as it goes all the way down. It's going to iterate across all of these and put them back in. And we're saving it as a data frame within a data frame. So let's see what that looks like. So it's scraping, it's thinking, it does it. That was pretty fast. Table data. Okay, so 2011 quarterback data frame, 94 rows by five columns. Okay, well, we can't see what's really going on inside there because it's a nested data frame, but that's what we want it to be. And you see that it says list here. Each of these uh, rows is actually a listed data frame. So we can extract uh, the data frames that are within that, and we'll take a look at it. So we have quarterback 2011, there's good old Mark Sanchez. And we have running back Adrian Peterson, Joe Thomas from the Browns at left tackle, and then Tony Gonzalez, one of the greatest tight ends of all time. So that matches up with our first four uh, data frames. Additionally, we can do another per function, which is flatten data frame. So this will take the four data frames that we had in those uh, rows and actually append them to each other. So we can see that you know it made one continuous data frame rather than four individual ones. We can see that Adrian Peterson is here attached to the bottom of the quarterbacks. And uh, keep going. And keep going. There we go. Okay. So we can see that now we're getting back to the rank one. There's Joe Thomas added to the end of that. So we can see that all four data frames are, are squished together. So we're going to build this uh, flattened data frame uh, and this map to function back into our original function. So our goal is to move the table data into the data column of scaffold. But first we need to flatten that data into combined data frames so we don't end up with multiple data frames. And we know that the data frames will end up being nested. So we'll have to deal with that later. So our original salary scrape function just looked at one table and then saved it, um, just kind of saved it there as a table. Our salary scrape function updated, we're going to add a few things. We're going to add system sleep three, which will wait a time period of three in between each of the calls because otherwise we're going to be bombarding them with uh, a lot of calls. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and run this because it is going to take a while. So the other part is I've added in this cat period. So this should start spitting out some uh, periods as it starts working through uh, the web scraping protocol. But we still have the URL. We're still gluing together. And you can see it real faintly here that those periods are starting to come up as it moves through uh, the rows of scaffold. So we know it's working at least, but this will take a while. So we're still building up uh, our URL with glue. So it'll iterate across and put in the year and the position of each pairs of the year position in our data frame uh, scaffold. Uh, we're aiming it back at the table of interest, reading the table. We're flattening the data frame so it's all appended. And then we're uh, into one data frame and we're setting the names. So what this is actually going to do is before it even throws it in there, we're setting the names to rank player, cap dollars, and cap percents. So we're tidying these names before they even get into our, uh, our final data frame. Because right now, they're untidy and have spaces and, and valid characters. We don't want that. So as it's working through, um, yeah, we can see that this will all be saved. Eventually, it will uh, finish writing this function and we'll be good to go. Well that took uh, remarkably longer than expected because of the timing so we will take a look at that scrape data frame. Uh, so we can see that we have the year, the position, and then each of the nested data frames within uh, those matching. So these will all be flattened nicely into data frame but they're still nested. So in our next step we need to go in to unnest them. So let's take a look at what that'll look like. So we're going from 80 rows to 12,000 rows. So this is all the data into one data frame, uh, kind of appended to each other um, row by row. So on top of that, we're going to uncomment that and add in that at the cap dollars and cap percent, again, we want to look through just the numbers. So we're doing that uh, reader function here. 
And what does that look like? So we get the uh, just the numbers, no percentages, no dollar signs, no commas. So we'll remove that. And then we're also going to add in this next portion, which is mutate position group. So case when is like a uh, vectorized if uh, else statement. So basically what we're telling uh, R is that if the position matches quarterback, running back, tackle, tight end, wide receiver, then we're going to apply, uh, or we're not going to apply, we're going to uh, input offense into this column here. Otherwise, it's going to input defense. Since we don't have special teamers scraped, uh, we don't need to worry about that. But if you did have special teamers, you'd need to add in an additional uh, statement here that would say like position in uh, long snapper, kicker, punter, uh, tilde, and it'll be parentheses for uh, special team. So that all looks nice. So we're going to go ahead and save this to position group. And while we're at the saving, we're going to also save this to an RDS file or an R data file uh, so we don't have to web scrape it again because that takes a while. Uh, next, we're going to look at actually making the data frame plotting, uh, plotting data frame. So this is actually going to go pretty quickly, but we're just taking our data frame, grouping by year, position, and position group, and then using the dplyr top end function. So this looks at the 16 highest values when in each of the grouped uh, variables, and we're looking at uh, the top 16 in terms of cap dollars. We're going to summarize the average pay in millions, so we're going to take the mean of cap dollars and divide by 1 million, and we'll save this to a data frame and take a quick look at it. So we can see each year, each position, the average pay, and it keeps going on by year maintaining the position. We'll just do a quick uh, kind of exploratory graph of that data to make sure it's looking nice. Build up that. Um, so we're doing uh, the mean pay data frame year by average pay in millions of dollars, group equals position, color equals position, so we get these nice uh, grouped lines, and then faceting by position group. So you can see for defense that everything is uh, pretty stable and then increasing, offense is increasing, but the uh, running backs here actually have a downward trend, although it seems to be picking up um, in the last year or so because Le'Veon Bell is getting paid a lot of money. He's a running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, lastly, we're going to make that uh, data frame for our original plot from 538. So this is going to be the top 16 pay data frame. So we're going to take our position group data frame, again, group by year, position, and position group, take the top 16 players in terms of cap dollars, ungroup it, and then mutate. So we'll take cap dollars uh, in millions, will be cap dollars divided by $1 million. And then the position, we're going to bring them all up to uh, all caps via two upper and convert it to a factor with these levels. So basically we get all the uh, offensive players on top and all the defensive players on bottom. You could do this a bunch of different ways. I just like being able to read it out uh, in particular like that. And now we've built up kind of uh, previously a basic plot. So this is just going to be, uh, we'll save it as G1, but we'll take that data frame we just made, uh, graph it out by year and by cap dollars, um, group everything by position, um, and we're going to do this uh, GM point with a low alpha. We'll do bump the size a little bit. We'll do four. No, we'll do three. Uh, and then we'll add that uh, smooth line that we saw from the graph. We're going to scale the axis to go from negative 1 to 30, just so we get a nice range, um, breaking at 0, 30, and 5, um, or by every 5 with sequence. And then for labels, we're going to use this to uh, change the, I guess not the scale, not the scaling, but what's labeled. So we're getting just the uh, dollar sign and the M on the highest value, which matches up with the 538 graphic. And then we will be faceting by position adding in our titles, where the data came from, and then using the GG themes, theme 538. So let's take a look at that. See how it turns out. So it looks pretty good. We got uh, a nice little graph built up. Um, looks pretty similar to what we would see from the 538 graphic, and we can go ahead and save that at a high level.
We'll see if it saves it here. Work, Work is complete. Thank you to the beeper beep function. And we'll take a look at the graphic. But it is here. And that looks pretty good. So let's take a look at it. So average pay for top running backs is stalled. Average cap value of the 16 highest paid players. We can see that there is this kind of downward trend, but Le'Veon Bell's keeping it real with the money making ability. Um, but all the other players seem to have this upward trend. Um, running backs definitely have stalled a bit. All right, so that's the end of this. I will be uploading code um, uh, in the notes for the YouTube video. And you can always join the Arc for Data Science online community to see more of these videos and interact. Thanks for your time.